then makes a decision to move up to becoming a Marine Corps fighter pilot. Pete is one of those guys who's trained to actually go into combat and, and look for trouble. In 2003, Captain Kiriaza says he had a UFO encounter that would haunt him for years and underscore what's at stake for millions of passengers. It was a little bit after 9-11. Everybody was uh, a little sensitive. So uh, we felt a little more of a bond to our passengers. Uh, it was a beautiful night, no clouds, uh, smooth air. Uh, we blasted off from Dallas Fort Worth. We had one leg left to Charlotte. Uh, the airplane was functioning perfectly. We got up to 35,000 feet and started cruising and everybody just relaxed. And then all of a sudden, I get a radar altimeter display and it immediately just pops on. A radar altimeter is designed to let the pilot know how close the plane is to the ground. It's a simple system. It's just emitting a straight a vertical radar beam. When you transition to land, it'll go 100 feet, 50 feet, 20 feet, 10 feet. So at 35,000 feet cruising along, I get a radar altimeter display 2,500 feet. It has to bounce off something. It can't just generate. Captain Kiriazis is shocked. The altimeter is telling him something is only 2,500 feet directly below his plane. And I'm thinking it's got to be just erroneous. It's got to be just a mistake. But then the situation becomes much more serious. So then it goes 22, 23, 20, 18, 17, and then it stops. The first officers and I just immediately snapped to attention. Some object was coming up underneath me, unverifiable, unidentifiable, but undeniable. Mm. They've called the tower. Towers have received nothing. Radar, nothing on radar. There's nothing squawking. Squawking is a term that they use for something that is pinging with a transponder in a frequency that we can identify as being a, a friendly aircraft. Then, as the captain and his co-pilot continue to monitor the radar altimeter, the mysterious object makes moves again. And then it goes 18, 17, 15, 12, it went to a thousand feet. It was behaving in a way that wouldn't really be logical if it was broken. So at this point, I'm thinking, well, let's make some turns. You're allowed to make shallow S turns uh, without getting air traffic control busy or upset. So we made some shallow S turns and, you know, kind of trying to look over our wing and below us or behind us. We couldn't see anything. He's not willing to jump to any conclusion of what this might be. He goes through the necessary process of elimination. Okay, could it be this? No, could it be that? No, could it be this? No. And then it went 800, 700, 500, 400, 300, and it stopped. I mean, the worst possible situation to be in as a captain. Your brain says this can't be happening, but you have to deal with it in the here and now in the present. So then it goes 200. Then it goes 100. How close is 100 feet when you're flying an aircraft at 525 miles an hour at 35,000 feet? 100 feet is it, it, it's, it's a thumbnail away from, from where you're at. And that distance can be closed in literally a fraction of a second. The worst case scenario is not even thinkable. You have the responsibility of all these lives. You have to make a split second decision coming soon and you have nothing to base it on but one bit of information if captain curiosity's readings are correct something is flying directly under his plane and closing in with nearly a hundred passengers on board he readies himself to take control if you've ever seen a jet they've got a little button here it's called the autopilot button my thumb was hovering over the autopilot button i said if it gets inside 100 feet i'm going to maneuver Captain Kiriazes keeps his eyes locked on the altimeter reading of 100 feet. It just stayed there, it seems, just eternal or just so long. And then it just, it just went away. And at that point, we, our heart rate's going pretty fast, and we thought, what the heck just happened? 
All right, Shalom. This is a hard one. Banyasha Allah of the Lions Den Camp. I want to say, Ka Halayim, La Yahawah, Bahashim, Mehavashai, Bahashim, Haraka Kodash, Mahamath. Double honor to the elder apostles of GMS and the elders. Shalom to you, Akim, Nakwatim, and children that believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth. Hey, uh, this is a quick lesson um, dealing with this topic. Uh, this airplane uh, pilot. You know, Cherry scared the, scared the hell out of him, man. To where um, he was up 35,000 feet in the air. And um, his radar picked up something huge up right up under it, below their plane. And they had a bunch of passengers on the plane. And, um, and it was moving in from 35,000 to 25,000. And creeping in all the way to 17,000. And then it creeped all the way up to uh, uh, 700 or whatever you said. Then it went to 300 and stopped. And then it went to <laughs> then it went to 100, like right there, man, breathing up on it, man. That's called always say breathing down down his neck. You know, like right there, man. That's how close them cherries can get to these airplanes. You know, they're getting, they're, like, like Pastor Hart said, man, they're picking a fight with them. These angels are picking a fight with Esau. They're getting prepared. All right? And if they, if, if the Most High gave the order, they would have destroyed those um, planes. And the, most likely the people as well. But that shows you that the, the, the chariots, are, the angels are in order, man. They follow the orders of Yahweh. That shows you, man. They can get that close. They like we, uh, we right there, a hundred feet. <laughs> like, as far as the plane goes, you know that's like right there. Like damn, they're like sticking their arm out and then you touch the other plane. You know, hundred feet. All they gotta move is a little bit, and they boom right there. Could have took them out. And it had that airplane pilot uh, scared as hell. You see him rubbing his leg, nervous. When he looked back on it, man, he's in fear because he knows whatever he saw, he's going to see him again. You know, they're here for a reason. And they're moving like that. Ways that they can't imagine or fathom or f can't understand according to their laws of physics or according to this third dimensional understanding. They can't uh, fathom it. All right? It's an astonishment to them. Now, because the scriptures speak about a war in heaven, and that's what they're going to war with, something that creep up on them like that. You know, within 100 feet, just right up under them, and they can't even see it. It know all his weak points. It's like, um, it's like, uh, what do they say? You know, certain animals can't see to the side or to the, you know, you got, you, you what they call them damn things, man. I hate to go there with T Rexes and shit. You know, they say they can't see in the middle on the movie Jurassic Park. Well, these angels, they know um the weak spots, man. They knew that that plane couldn't look up, and the pilot couldn't look up under it <laughs> and see what it was. Even if they did look at it, they um the chariots have cloaking devices. <clears throat> where they can increase or decrease their, their energy to where you can't see them. Move in and out of the fourth dimension. Because the fourth dimension is more powerful than this dimension. All right? Revelation 19 and 14. And the armies, see, these are armies, man. That's what it's ranking if you read Ezekiel chapter 1. It tells you their duties. All right? It tells you about... Um, and the uh, book of Revelation speaks about Michael the angel and Daniel, the archangel. Verse 14, the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, man. And that word white just means sparkling or bedazzled. You know, so they're going to be glimmering and shining, man. Like you see, this, if you're looking at the water in the morning, and you see that sh the sun shining on the, glimmering on the water, sparkling. 
All right. So they they call them white horses, man, the chariots. So inside that chariot were angels that were doing that, man. Creeping up on them like a, a, a panthera, which would be a, a lion or any type of other cat. Creeping up on them, man. All right, so these are armies. All right. The Lord called them his wings. He's coming with healing in those wings for the elect. And it's going to be destruction, a curse to the wicked. All right. So, Revelation 19 and 15. And out of his mouth go for sharp sword. So, they got laser beams. That with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of the Almighty. So, that, so they can't make a move until Yahweh shy. Let's get this. All right. Amos 9 and 8. Behold the eyes of the Lord. Yahweh. See, we, we're beholding that now. That his angels are, and himself, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, they're watching. Their, his, their eyes are upon the sinful kingdom. And I will destroy it from off the face of the earth. So that's their intent. They want to know what the angels are here for. Well, they ready to destroy something. All right, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. So the Lord is going to deliver the elect of Israel. Because those angels, they're waiting, anticipating. In Revelation 71, and after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. They're watching, they're watching everything. All right, these are the archangels, and they're sending out the other angels that are under them. Beautiful, right? Holding the four winds of the earth, so they're holding back the destruction. That the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. All right? And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living power. And he cried with a loud voice to the four archangels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. And the four archangels are Michael, uh, Raphael, Uriel, and uh, Gabriel. All right, and the top angel is Yahusha. Now, the one to whom it was given to open the seals. All right, saying, Hurt not the earth. Well, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. See, the, the, the Lord is going to give them the green light to go ahead and hey, let loose, man. You know, the blueprint the Most High gave them, they're going to operate according to those plans and hand out the judgments. And they, to creep up on a plan, that's going to be nothing. They're going to uh, spook the hell out of them. Scriptures call the Most High the King of Terrors. Saying, hurt not the earth. Neither the sea. All right, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. So the saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our power in their forehead. So that's why they can't do anything yet. yet they're waiting. All right. They, they got to wait for your house shot to get his, his first. All right, Zephaniah 3 and 8. Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith Yahweh, until the day that I rise up to the prey. So Yahweh is going to send Yahweh shot. Right, he's going to rise up to the prey. So everything has to wait, even the angels. For my determination is to gather the nation. The nation. So the Lord is gathering all the nations, and he's also gathering the elect, that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation even all my fierce anger for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. See that? So it's going to come from the Lord. That's why the angels can't do nothing yet, but they want to. It came within a hundred feet of that plane. Scared the hell out of man. Okay. All right. So these, the, the angels, they can't do anything. We can't do anything until Yahweh Shai shows up and he gives the command to fight. He gives the green light to the uh, to the angels. 
according to Psalms 91. He says, you give his angels charge over thee, and they shall keep thee in all thy ways, man. All right. Hebrews 1 uh, and 13. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool, right? So that anger is going to come from Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And the angels are going to do according to his anger and their own as well. But they got to give out his orders and his judgments. All right. That's why I said, scared the hell out of this dude, man. Just like it's, um, Yahweh Shai sent the hand to write upon the wall and scared the hell out of, uh, uh, who was that? Nebuchadnezzar's son, uh, Nebuchadnezzar. All right. Yeah, so like I said, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, but it was, um, what was his name? Belshazzar. All right, Belshazzar. And he, that damn Assyrian, the Lord sent the hand to write upon the wall the night he was going to destroy him. And um, what happened was uh, the dude shitted on himself. He was scared. His bowels loose and he was scared. All right, so the Lord put in fear into these nations, but he's still going to make them fight against them, according to Second Ezra 13. Job, thir Job 18 and 14. His, his confidence, see the Lord is breaking down their confidence, their pride. His confidence shall be rooted out of his tabernacle, and it shall bring him to the king of terrors, man. So the Lord is bringing them to himself, man, the, the king of terrors. Yeah, he bringing terrors upon them. You know, nightmarish type shit. He says she'll bring him to the king of terrors, man. So this is just the beginning of the spooky shit they're going to see. This is Jeremiah 5 and 22, and this is sort of two-thirds of our people that don't fear the Lord. All right? Fear fear ye not me, and this is toward Esau as well. Say, if you howl, will ye not tremble at my presence? All right? So however the Lord shows up, the people are going to tremble, man. Which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree that it cannot pass. And though the waves thereof toss in themselves, yet can they not prevail. Though they roar, yet can they not pass over it. All right. And that's just like these heathens. The Lord said he has, he has appointed their bounds that they cannot pass. They have a set moment to where the Lord is going to bring this place down. Matthew 24 and 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away, so the kingdoms come and go upon this earth. But my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour, no man, no of no man, no not the angels of heaven, but my Father only, man. All right. But as the days of the Noah were, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the, the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah went into the ark. See, the elect will go into the chariot. All right, or well, we get into this truth. They get taken into the chariots and knew not until the flood came. See, the ark is, represents this truth. And you coming into this truth, you're entering into that ark. And then when the flood comes, the Lord will take you up and carry you in the spirit. But um, two-thirds, they're not going to know until the flood comes and takes them all the way. But it's going to be fire this time. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. All right. That's right, man. I'm talking about Yahweh Shai. So that chariot was a sign of the times, the things to come, man. All right, twilight zone. This is Second Ezra 13 and 30. And he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth. It's going to scare the hell out of everybody. When them chariots pop up, they're going to be doing all kinds of maneuvers. You know, 
especially these jets and uh, military aircraft, moved in. It was crept up, man, from 35,000, I think it was, 3,500, whatever. It went to 17, then to 3, then to 7, then to 3, then to 1. It just kept stopping. And then it just stayed there and followed it, moved right with it. Man. You know? Because it's different than the chariot. The chariots, they actually can touch each other in the air, pass through each other. So they only Esau is not ready for what's coming, man. So they, they, it's going to be an astonishment. They're going to come to the astonishment of all the people, all right? To them, of them that dwell on the earth. So whoever's here, we get this word astonishment real quick. Extremely, extremely surprising, or impressive, amazing. Wow. And that's what this guy was. It was he was surprised. He was scared as shit. He was shaking. Sweaty palms. All right. And I could have kept I could have kept going with that in uh second Ezra thirteen, but I want to make this short, you know. But um in a briefing, this right here will sum it up as well. This is Revelations twelve and third and seven and uh seven. So those angels they're the army of the Lord. Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai, man, doing recon missions, you know, sabotage and all this. Seven, it says, and there was war in heaven. So it's going to be war in the heavens, man. Michael and his angels, so each angel have uh, angels up under them. All right, so this angel was given the order to do that. Moved within 100 feet, man, like a military exercise or something. So Michael, the the top angel under Yahweh Shai, Mayak Allah, and he's like God. He's powerful. All right, he gives the order to the other angels under him, just like the other four, uh, other um, three archangels, Uriel, Raphael, and uh, Gabriel. All right, Gabar Allah, Awar Allah, Rapa Allah, Mayak Allah. All right, Yahweh Shah. It says, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon represents Esau. All right, the, the, from from the EU, NATO to America. The dragon fought in his angels, so the autumn chariots are going to fight against these aircraft, and they prevailed not, so they're not going to win. Period. Everything they do, just like the Lord said, he controls the sea and the ocean that it cannot pass. The sand, it cannot pass the trees in the forest unless he wants it to. You know what you call the tide? It only comes up so high that he pushes it back to the, you got to set up perfect. It can keep pushing them far as it wants. The water wants to expand over to all, wants to devour the land. And the land wants to devour the water. To push out the water. But the Lord has it set up perfect to where they cannot pass each other to, as far as he wants it. Just like Esau cannot do anything that the Lord doesn't allow them to do. We are just like grains of sand. All right, and water. And Esau is that scriptures say, well, why do the heathen rage? They're like the waves of the sea ro ro roaring, you know, boasting. But the Lord said they're going to prevail not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. 